this afternoon's session, um, we're going to run through uh, the, the BrainSight software and how that works. Um, so um, the BrainSight software can be used in two ways. Um, first thing I'll start with is the, the manual there. If there's anything, so it's, it, it's quite a comprehensive manual. Uh, it's also available on BrainSight. So when you go onto BrainSight there, I'll close all this for you just so you know what I'm talking about. Don't say that. So we close this. If we go at the bottom here, and the big B there is BrainSight. And then if we go at the top there, if you go to Help, View TMS User Manual, that's an electronic version of the manual as well. So it's always going to be available to you. Um, should you upload BrainSight onto another computer there, um, that's, the, that's your unique serial number um, if it's going anywhere else. And as well, there's sample data on there. Uh, that's a USB there um, with some, some nice sample data on it there, which has got the, the head project on it. Um, so there's two ways. That's the, first, that's the first screen you presented with when you open BrainSight there. You've got open existing projects, which is projects that you've already been working on, um, which you can come back. They say to themselves, and you can come back to them. You've got new empty project, which is for um, data that you're going to bring in yourself. Um, so if you've got MRI data already or fMRI data, um, you can bring that in, and you can set targets, and you can kind of navigate the structures of it yourself. Or there's MNI head project. Um, so if there if there isn't any data available to you, you can use BrainSight. Um, you can use the 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 kind of anatomy of the brain, which has already been uploaded here. Um, so MNI is the Montreal uh, Neurological Institute. Now what they've done is I'll, I'll open this just to show you. What they've done there is they've taken 152 subjects. They've taken um, MRI of the brain of 152 subjects and average them and just made this head project there. So we can open this here and we can see there we've got the brain image of 152 different people there, but that's, that's just the average. So what I'm going to do is um, BrainSight can be used in, in two different ways. So like I say, we can, we can use it to set targets and anatomical landmarks. We can also use it to track the coils, which is, so the coil we'll be using this morning can be used um, with BrainSight. So BrainSight knows you can set a target on the scalp. So let's say this morning when we were stimulating the motor cortex, sometimes it's quite hard to find. So we can, we can find the motor cortex on BrainSight, and then we can set a target on there so we know exactly, OK, there on the brain is going to make Mark's finger move. So we can set a landmark on there. We can track the coil using the camera. And as soon as we get a bullseye on this, and the coil is in the right place, we can just press stimulate. And we know exactly there's no hunting around to do. We know, OK, that's exactly where we need to be. We can stimulate. So it's really, really good for that kind of, for that kind of stuff. And then as well, you've got the EMG on there. So you can say, OK, stimulate it there. We've got the right result. That's exactly what we're looking for. So I'll just take you through kind of how we how we go about um, setting stuff up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close that head project there. Everything in, everything in the MNI head project has already been set up, so it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be as good for me to run through that. So what I'm going to do is upload sample data. We've got MRI already on this for you guys to kind of have a bit of a practice with. So I'm going to close this here. I'm going to go to new empty project there. We can go click here to choose an anatomical data set. So we choose there. So we've got on this, we've got rock MRI connected. So this is, this is someone's MRI we've already got here. But of course, here, you want to be uploading your own data. So wherever that's, it be it um, a USB stick or a CD drive or whatever. So we upload your data there. We open that. And we can see in there, the first one here, anatomical, that just has got all of your, um, all of your anatomical data set there. So we've got the name, we've got the sex of the subject, when the scan was, what type of scan it is, and then the image size and the voxels and everything there. So we can open that and we can see, there we are, really nice data there. Close that. The, the next step to do is to set your atlas spaces. 
Now this can be done three ways. Um, it can be done from an XFM file. So the step when you register all that data, you can kind of set your atlas spaces within that. You can set them from a matrix. So you can define coordinates within that data. And then if we open from matrix, we can type in here exactly where we want a certain structure to be. If we close that. And what we, norm, what, we, what we do as well, is a good way to do it, is to set atlas spaces. So the way we do that is to set the AC and the PC. So it's two structures within the brain that don't move. They're the same in, you know, every, every single kind of primate has these two, two structures. And it's the bridge between the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere with the brain. So it's always, you want to be looking around. You see here, we've got a little white knuckle here and another little knuckle here in the brain. So if I click on this white knuckle here, if we look at it in this view here, so we come over here, move the cross there, you'll see there's that bridge there between each hemisphere. So what you want to do is if you press Alt, you can zoom in on there, and you want to get right in the middle. So if you scroll up and down on the crosshairs, you'll see that brain, that, that little bridge goes between the two structures there. So when you see that white, nice bright white dot, click right in the middle of it, and you can see back on here, that's that little white knuckle I was talking about earlier. So when you found that structure, set AC. The rear, uh, the, the posterior commissure is this knuckle here. So when we click on that, again, uh, on this screen here, I'll move the crosshairs, and we can see there's another little bridge between the right and left hemisphere. So we click back on there. That moves this one in the coronal view. That moves it back to the center line of the brain. So you can see here, we've got, if I zoom out of there, uh, where are we? If we move the crosshairs back to the midsection of the brain, and then on this one, oh, lost it. So we zoom back in there. Find that knuckle again. And again, we can see we've got that bridge there. So what we do there is we just set that posterior commissure. OK. And then down here, we go to next step. Now what we do here is we scale the brain so that it's the same orientation regardless of the size of the head of the human. So the, the brain is always going to be an average of the same size. So what you're going to do is you move this bounding box here. Now this, you can see here, is we want to move this, and we want it in the CSF, which is cerebral spinal fluid. So we want to take in each side of the brain there. And then if we click Update, we'll see here, we'll get a nice overlay of the brain. So at the moment, that's shown as being ever so slightly too big, because you can see on this screen, we've got activity of the brain outside the scalp. So what you want to do there is make that a little bit smaller, bring that in slightly, bring it in on the bottom, and we go to update. And we'll see how that's looking. Now, a good way to check your data against an MRI is if you go to overlay op opacity, we can see there, we can turn those colors down, and we can see how we're looking above our own data set there. So you can see on the back here, it's a little bit too big. So again, we'll turn that down. We'll bring the back of this data in a little bit. And we click Update. That's it. And it's rescaled that ever so slightly. It's brought that back in. OK, so we can finish that one there. So you can see there, we've got those two set up. So the manual, the Atlas spaces, has been set up in there. Good thing to do with overlays is, um, so overlays can be used to load um, an MRI image in. Um, we can lay an fMRI image over the top. So what we can do is we can have a subject in, M in, in an MRI scanner. If we're going to do um, a, a, motor, a motor protocol inside the MRI scanner, we can have the subject lie in there, move in their finger. Now what that's going to do is that's going to give us a nice signal in the brain of the part of the brain that is making the motor cortex, that is making the finger do, do the action. 
So we can bring that in here. And again, we've got some sample data here called Brodman. So we open that there. Now, you can see there, so the, the overlays bit I was talking about, because that Brodman data um, hasn't, we've not set Atlas spaces there. So you can see the overlay of the Brodman data is not quite right. So we've got the top of the scalp here, and it's miles off here, where our MRI data is, is underneath it. So if we, the registration there, if we move that from headers to using Atlas space, because we've already set the Atlas spaces, and then go to, where's update gone? Using Atlas space, that's it. It should move that down, he says. Bring in that. That's broken data. So open there. From headers, out of space. And then, okay, so that's not working for me. Bear with me just a second. There we are. So I was on the wrong one because I was using Atlas spaces. So we set ACPC box in the previous one. So you can see there it's, it's readjusted that. So now we've got our Atlas spaces sitting in the right place over the cortex there. So I did that. The registration is the Atlas space and using the Atlas space AC. So depending on how you've set your data up, you want it to match. Okay. So you can see there we've got fMRI data which is lying over MRI data, showing regions of activity within the cortex. Next thing to do is um, regions of interest. Now, regions of interest, um, it isn't commonly used, um, because normally you know, you know um, you're gonna know whereabouts in the scalp that you're, that you're uh, looking to stimulate. But I'll, I'll run you through it anyway. So if we go to a new region of interest, now what we can do there, is we can move this, we change the threshold here, change the threshold level so that we're only in purple on the bits that we want to focus on. So we've got the brain there still in purple. Now what we want to do is highlight those areas of interest that we're looking at. So if we move the crosshairs to the front of the brain, and we'll go back slightly so we're not getting the eyes in there as well. Okay, so what we'll do is we can plant a seed within the brain. Now that's given us there the areas of the brain that, that we're looking to, to go through. And these are taken in one millimeter slices. So as we go through the brain there, if we look at the sagittal plane here as we go through the brain, bear with me, we've got the cortex in there as well. So if we clear the seed on that slice there, go to the previous slice and just turn that threshold down so we lose the cortex there as well. If we go to the next we go to the next one. Bear with me, Let's see what's like there. Okay, next slice. So planting a seed. And as we run through the brain there, you just want to highlight the main structures of the brain. So you can see we've got our previous seeds in there. And as we're running through in the sagittal plane, that's what we're seeing there. So as you run through, make sure all your brain structures are still being highlighted in orange. So again, this isn't something you'd commonly do with your own data because you know the kind of region that you're looking to recreate. But I'll just show you, for example, there. So you see there we've lost that bottom section there. So if we click in there now, it's going to take all that at the same, same threshold and, um, and make it orange. And again, we missed it on the previous slice, so we run back through. There we go. So let's say, for example, that'll, that'll do for our kind of region of interest. You know, we've got a nice bit of a nice bit of brain there to look into. 
so we can close that. Um, next thing to do is a reconstruction. Um, so it's, the reconstruction part isn't necessary when you're using the MNI, um, the, the head project that's already uploaded, um, which I'll, I'll run through that after doing kind of our own data, because um, it's already been set. But with the new MRI, um, it gives the user 3D reconstructions um, of the skin, uh, the curvilinear brain uh, with like kind of the gyrus and sulky, so you can see all the kind of unique structures within the brain um, and the brain surface. Um, so I'll run you through that. So if we go into reconstructions here, so we can see there we've got our options of what we want to create. So if we do skin first, so if we go to, we want to bring the threshold down ever so slightly. If you go to compute skin, now we should get an image. There we are. So we get an image there of what we're looking at. Now with, with, with MRI, we don't need anything really underneath the nose because there's no brain tissue behind the nose. So we can move this box here and we can just take away all of that structure there. So we can bring that up. If we look in this window here, we can move that box up to just underneath the tip of the nose. And if we update that by clicking on Compute Skin, you can see there, that's much neater there. And you can also change the smoothness of the skin, so you can take that right the way off. That's going to give you all those kind of skin artifacts there. So that's picking up the, the you know, it's far too detailed within the MRI. So you want to smooth that quite a bit. There we are, much better. So you can see there, we've got the skin reconstruction taken from the MRI data within the scanner there. So we can close that once that's been set. And then we can set a full brain curvilinear. So again, what that's going to do is we can take away that bottom brain structure because we, we just don't need it. And then the opacity there and the peel depth, we can say how, how far each peel is going to go through the brain. So we compute curvilinear there. It's going to take a moment because of the resolution. And you can see there, we've got our full brain. So underneath, and that, that green dot is going to move depending on where in the brain I'm clicking. So you can see there, we're underneath the brain, and it's moving the cursor. As we turn the brain over and around, see there. So we've got a full curvilinear surface of the brain there. So again, that's been set. And now what we can do, so that region of interest, the orange kind of structure that we created before, we can now import that as well. And we can make a surface from the region of interest. So you can see here, this is the thing we highlighted earlier. If we bring that in, so you can see we've got the top of the top of the cortex there with each of those kind of gyrus and sulky. So again, and then we've got that kind of that deep brain stem there going down. So again, the, the surface, it will only create the section of the brain that you're interested in. You know, there's, there's no need for you to highlight the whole brain because it's unlikely that you're going to be stimulating the whole surface of the brain. So if, you're, um, if your research focuses on the frontal lobes or the, the kind of occipital lobes at the back or the transverse lobes, then you can just find those within your, within your MRI data, highlight those, and then make your surface structure there. Okay. So the landmarks. Now what this does is um, it, it's, it's already been set on the MRI, but it's very important in new data. Um, so the, the accuracy with this is really key of, of setting the landmarks on this. Um, what you want to do is find um, points on the face which are set. So you don't want anything on the lower jaw because obviously you can move the lower jaw independently of the rest of the head. So what we tend to do is find the nason, so the, the kind of the bit just in the bridge of the nose, and then the LPA and the RPA, which is a little kind of notch just above the tragus of the ear there. So again, they're roughly the same place in all in all humans, and it's the same where you the the, the brain sits in the same place relative to those place in an individual. And what we can do as well, because those three are on the same plane across there, 
it's good to put the tip of the nose in as well. It just gives an extra dimension because it gives you a bit of depth there. So if we go into configure landmarks, now what we want to do is we want to click on here exactly where we need to be. So I'm just going to come around in front of the camera, unfortunately. So first one there is an easy in. So if we click right there on the bridge of the nose, you can see here on this one, we want to bring that up slightly because in this patient, it's not quite in the right place. So if we bring that up there and we set that first landmark, go to new, landmark one, we call it the Nasian. So we set that. Okay, so when you get that little red box, that means that landmark has been set. Next one to do is the LPA. So you notice that I've gone to the right side of the brain. That's because this at the moment is set up for a radiology setup as opposed to neurology, where radiology looks from above, so left and right is the other way around. You can change that in preferences. So if you go to the top there, and you go into brain site preferences, you can change here. So we've got left is right and right is left because of radiology. radiology. In neurology, we can swap that round and have right is left, and you can see there the MRI switching sides. So again, we'll set that just in there. So we've got the ear, we've got that notch. So the tragus is here, that's this bit of the ear. You've got that notch just above. So we want to set that, and that's our LPA. So click on new, and then this one is LPA. Okay, that's that one set. So again, we go to the other side, set the same thing there. We've got that notch, there's the tragus, we've got that notch just above, we'll set that. And again, you can see on this one, it's on the same plane all the way across. So new, and then we've got RPA. And finally, on the tip of the nose there, so we want to swing our subject round, find the tip of the nose, again, Make sure you're being nice and accurate with this. So double check in the sagittal plane that you are right on the tip of the nose. And then new one there. We can set that as tip of nose. OK, cool. So that's our landmark setup. So that means now when we have a subject sat underneath the camera, those landmarks are going to be identified on the subject. So with the coil knows where it is in relation to those points. So we can come out of there. And then when we go into targets, configure the targets. So we can see we've got that fMRI data, which is sat over the MRI data. So we can see we've got regions all over the cortex there. Now to turn that off, we can go into the inspector, which is this blue button here. Overlays, if we untick that, it's going to take that off for us. So it depends on kind of how you want to use that. Because um, targets can be set four ways. Um, so they can be set on um, by anatomy. So if you know what the structure is inside the brain, if you know what structure you're looking for and what it looks like in, in the anatomy of the brain, you can highlight that. So for example, we know the motor cortex is this strip here which runs down the back of the brain. So we move that to there. We've got the motor cortex strip there. So if we're looking to stimulate the motor cortex, we can go back to regions of interest, and we can draw the motor cortex here. And we can bring that in on this one. You see there we've got the cursor goes to the curve of the near on the brain there. We can change that view, and we can have that on. So we know where that would be on the skin. There we are. So you can see there the curse is sat kind of inside the scalp. That's because when we stimulate, we either set a, we, we either set a, cortex, um, a landmark on the cortex or on the scalp. So we've got that crosshairs offset there. So we know it's about, we're looking about 12 or 15 millimeters underneath the scalp for the cortex. So we can just bring that out by about 15 mil. And you can see there, we've got our TMS coil, which is now sat on the scalp. 
as opposed to being inside the cortex. Um, so that's, that's the first way to set them. And then you've also got here, what you want to do is we want to use this bottom dotted line here. So we want that to be on a tangent when we stimulate. So we're looking to get that nice and flat underneath there. So we move that crosshair's origin out a little bit. We want that nice and flat. That's it. So again, nice and flat on there. And you can see here, the TMS coil is now sitting a little bit off the scalp. So if we move that down ever so slightly, just so it's onto the scalp, we've got that, we've got that green line just sat right on the scalp there. And then this here, this third one, allows you to twist. So I said earlier this morning, um, the orientation of the coil is quite important because you always want to stimulate at 90 degrees across that gyrus. So again, you can change the orientation of the coil by moving this one here. So that's how you set a target based on an anatomical landmark. So you go up to new and then marker there. So we know that when we use the coil, we want to set a marker on the scalp as, OK, that's an area to stimulate. So we set that as a marker there. And we can rename. There we go. So we close you. We can name that as, let's say, for example, we call this motor cortex 1. So you see at the moment, that there, all that's doing is giving us a point within the scalp that we want to stimulate. What we can do, it's very important to get the orientation of the coil right to stimulate the right part of the brain. Now we can change that to a trajectory. Now what that does there is that gives us a little column, if I move this out of the way, that gives us a little column on the brain which tells us the angle that we want to be sending that pulse into the brain. So it means that the, it takes that guesswork out. So you know this morning we were having, getting the coil kind of flat on the head. People have got different shaped heads. That tells us exactly the orientation. When we're moving the coil around, that tells us exactly the orientation that we need to be entering the, uh, entering the scalp. Another way to set them um, is to enter the coordinates. So. If in your data you've identified an area within the cortex um, and you've, you've got the coordinates of that, you can enter them in there. So you've got your x, y, z coordinates. So when we enter, say for example, we enter 0, 0, 0, that should take us right to the center of the brain. There we are. So you can see now the pointer is sat kind of underneath the scalp right in the midline of the brain there. Um, overlays. So the thing I took off just before, we can also set, we can, use, we can set markers using the overlays. So we've had someone earlier, they've come in, they've, done an, they've been in the MRI scanner, they've done a functional task within the MRI scanner to highlight a region of activity within the, uh, within the cortex. We bring that in there. We change the threshold to the area that, we, that we're after. So if, for example, it's a motor cortex, let's say we want number four, which is that nice light blue one. So bring that down. Where are we? That one there. So that nice blue structure there. Now what we can do. So we can then make a marker within that blue structure. And we can say, OK, I know this is the right place within the head. I need to be stimulating. So again, we've got that just there. And it's moving the cursor around. When I click, it moves the cursor onto the right region of the brain there. You can see we've got, when I come back down there, We've got that marker already set. If I go to motor cortex one, you can see, go to, you can see we've already got that marker sat in the nice blue area of the motor cortex. Um, another way to do it is to actually stimulate first. 
So we can, we can skip all of the, the kind of landmark making and we can stimulate first and we can find, we can use the EMG on a TMS machine to find a, a hotspot. So like we did this morning, we can say, okay, there's a lot of activity there within the brain. And we then go back a step, which I'll show you how to do after this. We then go back a step and we can make a motor map there. So we can take in, we can, we can bring all of the information in, we can import it here and we can say, oh, We've got a lot of, um, we've got good peak-to-peak -peak amplitudes there. We can bring that in here, create a motor map, and it'll let us see we've got a good hotspot there right over the motor course X. We can then make a marker there. So the next time we administer TMS, so let's say we've done our MEP and we now want to administer our TMS protocol, we can find the region of the brain which we want to stimulate. So let's say it's on the frontal lobe. We can make a marker on the frontal lobe using a motor map there. So again, okay. So you can see there, so that's how, there's also a rectangular grid. This is good if you want to stimulate a wider area. So for example, we want to stimulate over a, a number of points within the frontal cortex. We make a grid there. Now, is it in the wrong place? Bear with me, I'm gonna remove that because the cursor is in the wrong place. So we come over the front of the head there. You always want, when you're doing, um, when you're making a grid, you always want to make sure the cursor the, it, so the grid will, will work where the center of the grid will be right where the cursor, is, the cursor is there. So we go to new rectangular grid. That gives us a grid on the scalp of different locations. And we can then change the grid size. So that's the 2D size of those, uh, those dots and the 3D size of those dots. And again, at the moment, we've got markers or trajectories. We can change those to traje trajectories there and we see We've got a number of different kind of trajectories there. Now, one thing that's been, which is a new update for BrainSight there, all those trajectories are in straight lines. So when we stimulate the scalp, that's going to be in, it, it doesn't, because the head is curved, when we put the coil on the head, those trajectories aren't going to be in the right place. So what we can do there is we can snap to. Now, the things that we've already created, so we've created a curvilinear brain structure, we can optimize the trajectory using that surface there. And we can snap the nodes to the curve of the near brain. So we're going to be stimulating on the skin, and we've got the curve of the near brain structure that we've already created. So we snap those. And when I do this, we'll see all of these will spread. So we're stimulating the right place on the cortex whilst we've got the coil on the scalp. There we are. So you see there. So when we go over the right place on the, um, when we use the coil and go over the right place here, we're going to see that we're, we're on the right orientation, the coil is in the right orientation to stimulate where we want to be on the scalp there. Okay, um, so the next thing to do is to take all of these. So we've got nice landmarks set. We take all of these and we then, we, we use BrainSight to track the coil around. So I'll show you now and how we do that. So we close this, and we go to sessions. So you can see there, those are our points that are saved. We go to sessions, we go to new online session. That's where we can review a previous session. So that point I was talking about where we stimulate first, we can stimulate, we can then go to review that session. And because there's no data there, because we've, we've not done the thing. Um, but say for example, we've stimulated there, we can create samples from there and we can convert those targets. So sample there, and we convert those targets, convert those samples to targets, which is the kind of backward step I was talking about earlier. Okay, so if we go to new online session there, and we want to stimulate that part there, so the motor cortex thing that we made. So we add this to our session, and we go to the next step there. Okay, so you'll have to ignore this. Um, this here is, so the, the I.O. box is set up to receive EMG signals, but you've, the, the, the I.O. box that the university has bought hasn't got the EMG module in because you've got the EMG module on here. So that there is just picking up noise. Um, so you can just ignore this page here. Um, but because we're using the stimulator to trigger brain sight of when to capture that sample, 
you always want to make sure if the stimulator is coming in on TTL1, then you want to turn TTL1 on because that will say brain sight, listen to what the stimulator is doing. Every time you click the button or send a pulse on the coil, brain sight will capture exactly where the coil is. And again, you can use the switch there and should, depends on the input you're coming in on. So we've got the foot switch turned on as well. Foot switch is coming in on TTL1 and TTL2. So we're using TTL1 as a stimulator, TTL2 is the foot switch. So the foot switch there, we're going to use that in a second to say when I use the pointer and we're on the nasion, I'm going to press the foot switch and it'll say, okay, I know that the, the point is there. Instead of me kind of pointing there and then finding around with the mouse, it's nice to have that because you can be next to your subject and you can be in the right place there. The next thing to do is to go through to the, um, to the Polaris there. Now this here, the Polaris is highlighting this field of view. So I'm going to move this across next. And we'll sit the chair in the right place. So normally this would be your brain sight chair there. But for the process of this, is we're just going to use the green one. Now what this is going to do is the Polaris is going to be looking for these reflective spheres. Um, it's quite important that you don't touch these reflective spheres because the, the, the natural oil that you get on your hands, it'll block the reflectiveness. And if they're scratched, they just come up as dead points so that the camera won't be able to find these if they're kind of scratched or if they've got oil on them. Um, if you do accidentally touch them, you can clean them um, just with a, you know, the alcoholic like alcoholic wipes, so you can wipe them with that and take that kind of that oil on off because it I mean, sometimes you will accidentally touch them. Um, if they are scratched, you do have spares, so you are able, you just a pair of um, kind of latex gloves, you can just pull them off and you can pop a new one on there. So you see, when I come underneath the coil, we'll see on this screen that green dot appear. So the Polaris is watching that. So let's say, for example, this is the coil. The Polaris is tracking that coil around there. And we can see we're in the right place because we're going to get a little green. If I move the mouse there, we're going to get a green tick on all the ones that are visible there. So you can see the coil there has just gone to green. When I take it away, we're no longer tracking there. OK. And again, we bring the pointer in. So this is what we use to locate those landmarks on the scalp. Again, we bring the pointer in, and you can see we've got the coil there. Because these three dots are in different orientations, brain sight is able to distinguish which is which. So you can, you can have you know, as many as you like in there. And as long as they're different orientations, brain sight will be able to work out which one's which. So you can see there, the, the tick is, point, the, the, the tick is um, highlighted there for the pointer and on the coil tracker. So I'll put those back. So if we have uh, one thing I need to do as well, before you stimulate, it's important to calibrate your coil. Um, I've already done it for you, but for the process of a demonstration, I'll do it for you again. So what you want to do is take your calibration block, which is this one here. You've got calibration block. We've also had these made for you. So this sits on the calibration block there. And the middle spike, you want the middle spike there just to be flush with that hole there. So if it's not flush, you can wind it down ever so slightly. You just wind that in, and again, wind that in, just so that's going to sit. And that spike there is going to hold the center of the coil right over there. So if we take, I'll grab a demo coil. So what we want is the hot spot of the coil, which is between the two center windings. And again, it's, it's always on Daymed coils. It's always marked with the cross. You see the hot spot of the cross of, of the coil right over there. And it should click in quite nicely. There we are. So that's sat in the right place just there. Now, one thing we have discovered is that we've asked Daymed. So we've asked Daymed to put these subject trackers on the front there. One thing we have noticed is the bottom of it there is interfering with the calibration block. 
So normally you want that sat dead flush, which it would normally do, because these aren't normally here. So we're going to have these, we'll either have these remanufactured, so this bit doesn't sit as proud there, or we'll have a little bit shaved off there, so it's going to sit flush again. Um, that's something that, again, is for me to work on when I get back to the office on Monday, is to come up with a solution for that. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be too long. Okay, so we want to have a nice flat surface, and I'll just bring this round. Saved it. Nice dramatic, uh, whoever that was, that was good. <laughs> So we bring this round in front of the camera. Now, we need a coil tracker in the coil so that the camera knows which is the coil. So we sit that just in there. That sits quite nicely. And then we sit that on the calibration block. So hopefully, it's gonna sit, the camera's gonna say, okay, I found the calibration block. I recognize that, he says. Okay. That is that. There we are. And then we sit the coil on there. So the coil sits. Oh, it's blocked it. Bear with me. back to the camera for this, but I do apologize. Okay, so we want that sat nice and central. And then we set our coil on there as well. So this is where we do the calibration. So you want that sat nice and you want that sat nice and flat. So you can see at the moment there, I'm having to hold that up by about three or four millimeters just to get that to sat flush to, to sit flush. So what we're going to do, if I can have a handy assistant, just to move the mouse for me. So if you, if you grab the mouse on the Mac, and if you go right up to the top, so the menu appears, right up to the top of the window, keep going up, keep going up, keep going up. So if you come across slightly, so you want this, and you go to Window, TMS Coil Calibrations there. So you click on that, and we get this one. So you got the name of the coil, the name of the tracker. So you can either recalibrate, which we'll do there. So You've got your BF70, you've also got your BF70 cool coil, so you want to calibrate each coil individually. So we go to recalibrate. Now this here, when these are both green, so the, the camera knows exactly where they are. And we can go to, we can either use the IO box switch, so I can press my foot on this to say, okay, we go. Or you can, you can click there to begin the calibration countdown. So if we, if just for the, for the instance of this, we'll have you click. So I hold this nice and level. And then if you press begin calibration countdown, that's it. So your coil is now calibrated. So the coil now, brain sight knows exactly where the coil is going to be used, and it knows the orientation of the coil with respect to the scalp. So take that over there. I'll wheel my table back. Okay, so now it's time for us to have a subject so we can move the coil across the subject's head and we can show how this, the, the coil can be tracked. So if we've got someone who wants to take a seat, I won't administer any TMS. It's just, we just, need, we just need a model so that I can show how the coil is tracked across the head. If anyone fancies. Nasian. Anyone? We need someone to sit on the chair just so I can. We have a, the orientation of the coil there. 
Yeah? OK, so you can see on this on brain site, we've got there the landmarks that we set earlier on. So what we're going to do there is we're going to have, what's your name? OK, <laughs> so we're going to have our subjects that here, and then we're going to use the pointer to find those locations on the subject so that the, this can all, you know, the, the camera can orientate itself. So what we do is we need a, we need a tracker on the youth. So there's two different ways of tracking the subject. We either have a headband there, so the subject can wear a headband, or we also have the glasses there. So as long as, long as the subject tracker stays fixed to the, um, to the subject, so that everything moves just the same, then the camera will be able to pick it up fine. So let's say, for example, we got these on here. So we've got the glasses there, and on there you've got each side to put in the coil tracker. You take your little Allen key. Now, being careful not to touch those reflective dots, there's a little, uh, a little group screw in there. If you want to undo that, then you can see that that's just swung around. Take your hex rod out. Pop it back in there. And again, you want to get those tightened up just to stop that from moving around. But it's worth, when that's in, it's worth just giving that tracker a little wiggle just to make sure that those, um, those little screws there, they're not on an edge. Otherwise, it, when you tighten them up, it'll jump around. And you, don't, you don't want the subject to, you don't want the tracker to move whilst you're on there. So if you want to pop those on, that's it, cool. Now we should see on this one here. So we want to take our pointer there. And we're going to pop this on each part of the, each part of the, uh, the subject there. So. So the camera is, there we are, where are we? Bear with me just a second. So it's not seeing that subject tracker. So what we need to do is, if we can just change the orientation of that. Bear with me. Leave them on. We'll just spin this round so that the camera can see that. OK, I might have to move the chair slightly. So if we move the chair this way slightly, so uh, just stand up a second. Just stand up for me. So if we, I'll just borrow this just quickly. Okay, so if we have you actually facing We'll turn the chair around. We'll have you facing the screen there. So the camera's picking up that subject tracker again there. OK. So you can see, now that we've turned the subject round into the field of vision, this has now gone green at the bottom here. So the camera knows where our subject is. If I take the pointer now, and we find those landmarks, and we can have the crosshairs driven by we've got the crosshair and change what the crosshairs are. So if we have a little mini kind of TMS coil. So now when I move the pointer, 
we want to tell it exactly where we are on the subject. So I'll point to the nasium there. So just on the bridge of the nose. So if we, can have, if we can have a third assistant just to click the mouse because the foot switch isn't working for me. So when, when I say, if you press click on the mouse. Okay. And then we want LPA. So this tells you the next landmark to go to. So we want LPA, which is around this side. So again, it's that notch just above the tragus there. So right in there. Yeah. RPA. That's on this side here. So that notch, again, just above the tragus there. Tip of nose. And then again, down to the tip of the nose there. So just there. So you want the pointer just to rest on the tip of the nose. You don't want to be pushing at all. Did you sample that? Yeah, we're good. Okay. So once that's done, the next step to do, leave your glasses on. So the next step to do is to validate those. So when I take the pointer now, you should see it's moving, it's moving around where I am um, compared to the subject there. So we take the pointer, and you can see there that we're on the top of the head, and again, that we're around <laughs> the back of the head, and I get this. There we are, so you can see there. So what we're going to do is take a few more samples and it's going to validate where the subject is in relation to this. So, so what you're looking for with this one as well is we're looking to keep this between, around the landmarks, you're looking to keep this green. So that's one to five millimeters is, is a, good, um, a good registration. Um, as you, obviously, the curvature of the head changes. So as you go from one place to another, because of the curvature of everyone's head is slightly different, you may see this number go out a little bit, but as long as you're taking samples, it's going to resize the subject's head as you take samples um, as we move the pointer over the subject's head. Okay, so is my foot switch going to work this time? Okay, so we're on the top of the head there. So we want to move that round. Sorry, so the field of vision here is. So if I could have someone to click on the mouse again. That's it. So if you just keep clicking, just click away. That's it. Keep clicking. Yeah, that's good. And BrainSight is going to work out kind of where the pointer is. Bear with me. Okay, so if we can bring, if we can bring the chair around slightly. That's it. Okay, that's it. Yeah. So we go across the front of the head. Yeah. And then I'll just move this. losing us on the back of the head. If you put your head forward for me a little bit. And then, if you, can you shuffle forward for me a little bit? Go towards the camera, go a little bit more, further towards the camera, that's it. There we are, that's good. Keep clicking. And then we go across. Oh, come on now, okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, so that one there, that's good. So that's, that's really good there. So we got, a, we got an incorrect landmark there. So we, we sampled something that was over here. So what you can do with there is because we know that's incorrect, we can just go to that landmark and say, 
don't use this one because it's in the wrong place. Okay, so I, yeah, keep clicking. And then we've got the front of the head there. should see on this one here, we've got some refinement landmarks there. So, so now we should see when we do this that those numbers there, so you can see the bottom one there, the cross out of the skin, we're in the green, which is good. That's exactly where we want to be there. So we're green all the way kind of around the head across those poles of the head. So what we do now, now that the subject has been registered and validated, what we do is we attach a subject tracker, we attach the tracker to the coil, and then we can administer TMS, so we can bring in that landmark from previously, and we can pop a, a tracker on the coil, and we can find that, we can find that location on the cortex using brain sight. So we go to perform, we've got that marker there, in the trajectory, and you can see here we've now got a bullseye there. So again, we can move that. So you can change all of these depending on, and a good thing to do here is if you go to inspector, we can get rid of that fMRI data now because that's, that's irrelevant to us because we don't need that anymore. We know the structure of the brain that we need to be in. We can change these views here in line in 90. So if we go here, say for example, we've got perpendicular and samples. So that's going to tell us exactly where we're moving. So I'm just going to pop a coil tracker in here. As I move this around, one second, we're logging off. Bear with me. So we no longer want the pointer. So you want to make sure that the thing that's moving the cursor around, you want that on this one. We're no longer using the pointer to find those landmarks on the scalp we're going to use the coil instead. So the driver there, you want to change that to be so BF70, which is the coil that we've calibrated there. And this knows what a BF70 coil looks like, so it's going to change on there. So when I pick this up, now, if we've got all of this correct, we can move the coil, there we are, around the head, so it knows exactly where we are. So if I'm just going to pull this a little bit closer. So the problem is, we've got one problem here where the BNC cable is very, very short. We're going to ship you a new one which is longer um, so that obviously you wouldn't normally have brain sight and the I.O. box uh, and then the TMS machine right next to each other. So we can move this around and we find the coil on the scalp. So you can see there, that magnifying glass is closer to where we want. So when the coil is in the right place, that background. So the red, the red one there, we're navigating the coil, and then the red dot is the orientation there. So what we want to do is bring this round here, if I work from this side, so the camera can see. to try and give us a little bit more cable there, but I don't want that. I'll move you out of the way. So as I bring the coil round, there we are. So you can see we're navigating towards the right spot there. Now once we're on the right spot, so luckily it's not going to mean it's administering TMS because <laughs> it's going to be you that gets this right. 
So as we navigate to the right spot on the scalp, what we do is we take a TMS sample. That's correct, yes. Yeah. So it works both ways. You've got the orientation of the coil is moving it, and when I actually move the coil along the scalp, it struggles there as well. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I would have fired there, but obviously we've not got the stimulator turned on because we don't want to administer TMS to him. But when we do there, so we turn enable on there, we're in MEP mode. So the coil thinks, because I've taken it out of the field of vision, the coil thinks that it's in the right place there. And when I press this, oh, does it have to be in the field of vision there? No, it's okay, you won't get hurt. <laughs> Give me just a second. So what that should be doing there is finding. Oh, why is that not working? My apologies. No, no, this is working perfectly yesterday. And then today when we actually do the live demonstration, it doesn't want to work. Okay. Let's say, for example, the coil's in the right place. We've pressed the red button and we then take a sample. So then we can see on this one, if we, where's that sample gone? If we go to that sample there, my goodness. It should give us, I do apologize. Okay, all right, I'll try this with the pointer instead. So I'll move the point around. Okay. So we go to the right place on the head, on the scalp. We move the pointer around. And then if we have, if we pretend that this is my TMS coil, and if someone was to press sample now, we've got someone who could click the mouse for me. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. So we can see on there that whilst the coil was in the right place, obviously the orientation of that was incorrect. So when the coil is in the right place and the orientation is the right place, those two red columns will line up exactly there. And then we can go back there. So we can finish that there. We can then review that data there. So session one, create today at half past two. We review that there, and we can see exactly on the scalp. So you go back into this session. So we say, Mark, we don't want you administering TMS because you can't find the right place on the scalp. So you can see we've got, that was our, that was our trajectory. Oh, sorry, I'll just move the cursor there. That blue, that blue one there is the one we set up. That's where we said that's where we want to go. The red one there is where we did actually stimulate. So you can see there where the two overlap. That was because the TMS coil was in the right place on the scalp, but the orientation of the TMS coil wasn't firing the pulse in the right direction. Which is what I mean about you need to, which is when we're on the head. So whilst we can have the hotspot in the right place, if the orientation is off, it will fire the pulse the wrong way across the head. And again, we can turn off that. If we turn off that fMRI data there, we can see there, you get a clearer view there of where we were. So you can see that they're crossing there I say because they were on the right place. So apologies, it wasn't, it wasn't the, the finest demonstration. 
but is there any questions? I'm sure there will be questions. Is there anything I can make a bit more clear for you? Yeah, so you'd want you'd want each coil to be calibrated. Yeah. So every time every time you administer TMS, you want to have your coil, the coil that you're using. So if you're using, for example, if we're using, uh, we're doing an RTMS protocol and we've got the two coils there, we want to calibrate each coil. So you could have BF71 and BF72, and then when you change coils on this, you could calibrate. So when you go down to whatever is driving it, you have. So we go back to the session screen. So you could have your driver there. You could set up as BF70. You could change that. When you swap the coil in the stimulator, you change that to BF72. Yeah. So you want each coil to be calibrated, yeah. You don't have to. It's good practice. Um, to calibrate before every TMS session because you don't know if another user might have knocked the tracker slightly. Um, so it, it, I mean, it's unlikely because you don't want to be touching those silver dots anyway. Um, but it's, it's good practice to calibrate each coil before each TMS session, yeah. And the calibration, as you see, once the calibration is flat, it, it's, it's a six second job. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't take very long. How many landmarks? Um, it, as many as you like. Um, I mean, it's 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 unlikely you'd be setting kind of loads of landmarks. You know, we, I mean, you wouldn't normally be stimulating the motor cortex and the frontal cortex and something else. You know, in in one session, you'd probably be only stimulating one area of the brain. Um, but yeah, in terms of landmarks, you can set as many or as few as you want. Anything? Um, so we, we ran over that this morning, and so what we'd have is we'd have the chair here where the, instead of the green chair, and we'd have a coil. So this here would be holding the coil. So BrainSight is, there's a coil tracker on the back of this as well. So BrainSight knows exactly where this coil is and exactly where kind of the chair is. So as we're stimulating, this is all held nice and still. We've got our subject still. It takes away that human error. So when I was struggling to orientate the coil there, the, the chair helps us take away that error. So as long as we, we put this on the right side, on the you know on the right place on the on the on the scalp, and the, we can then stand away. And it's, because everyone's nice and still, we've got our subject who's kind of secured with the chin rest and the and the forehead rest, and um, takes away that that human error element. Again, sorry? Um, the subject will be tracked during a stimulation, but you don't want the, the subject, you don't want them. So long as the area you stimulate and stays still, yeah, there's no problem with them kind of moving their hands or their legs. But when we're stimulating the head, because the. Correct, yeah, because so you want your subject to be as still as possible because if we've got the coil on there and if the subject moves their head slightly and the coil stays still, we're then not going to stimulate the right area. So the good thing about the brain sight chair is that it enables the subject to be as still as possible so that the, the subject can be nice and still. We've got the coil nice and still there. So there's, there's then very little chance of us stimulating. You know, there's, there's no accidental movement so there. Mean, uh, 
yeah, so we've got, because we're wearing the glasses of the headband, the subject tracker is going to move with the head. Yeah, you'll be able to filter out those movement artifacts, yeah, because they'll come up as a, you know, as a, in, in the EMG, they'll come up as something a bit different there. So you can, you can apply a filter and remove those movement artifacts. You're welcome to have a go with it and uh, try and orientate the coil, orientate the coil in the, in the right way. So you can take those off if you like. Yeah. So, <laughs> so if you've got the glasses on there, another thing we can do there then is instead of having those on, we can take those off. And we can have the subject wearing. We can have them wearing the headband instead. So this can be a bit more comfortable there. So we've got a headband on there, and we've got the, the subject tracker just there. It means then that there isn't anything kind of resting on the face at all there. Say that again? Uh, does the system require any MRI frame images for the application? Yeah, so one thing I didn't cover actually there, that's a good point. One thing I didn't cover there is you can, you can use BrainSight without your own MRI. So you, the MNI head project that I was talking about already has an average of those MRIs of 152 people. For everyone, um, any ages? Yeah, so we come out of here completely. So I quit this. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So we can, we can quit this completely. And then if we open MNI head project, so that there is an average of 152 there. So that is, that's an average kind of MRI that's already taken. So you can then you can, you can plot your targets using the MRI data of the MNI head project, which is already set, instead of having your own MRI data. Obviously, for, for accuracy, you would rather have your own MRI data and then be plotting landmarks on there. Sure? What format is it in? Do you know? OK. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. So if we put that in there. So that, the, the, the stuff that we've worked on today is all sample data. But what we'll do is we'll open this here. Choose Nanocom because it's a remote disk there. Oh, wait for it. There we are. So it's in DICOM. DICOM's a good format. It, it's the most common MRI format that we see. So if we open that, BrainSight is going to scan all of those files there, and it should upload them all. And we should find, we'll wait for that. Seems it's not there. You see the images as well? See the images? Yeah, so you see the images will be uploaded onto this. Say that again? Both CT and MRI scan are wonderful. Uh, CT scan, uh, I don't know. I'd have to get back to you on that one. Okay. Um, but MRI and fMRI, yeah, there's, okay. there's no problem with that. Just bear with me, it's being quite slow. Thank you. 
taking a while. This, is, this could be taking a while because it's quite a high resolution. Um, but <laughs> it's not normally this long. There we are. So you can see there we've got quite thick slices. So we've got slices of uh, two and a half mil there. So that means the resolution on this as we go through those slices. So you can see. Uh, where are we? So we've got that there. If I just come out of this and we go to app for spaces. Hmm. Let's try and upload that a slightly different way. So again, uh, just to show those image details. So that's another one. So for some reason, that's coming up as very, very thick slices there. So if we zoom. So we have to see, we've got our PC just there. So I'm just zooming on. That structure there. So I'd have to have a look at those resolution. Uh, the resolution of this is is unusual. Normally we wouldn't we wouldn't see it that pixelated. Uh, but yeah, so we can set those atlas spaces there. We'd we'd set them in. So then we'd orientate the, the size of the MRI to the size of the head by setting the atlas spaces there so it knows we've got a distance of, let's say, 70 mil, which is, is way off, but let's say we've got 70 mil between the AC and the PC there. It would resize that brain to the, um, electronically to the right size. But it's coming up as, so normally we'd see, so we've got an image size of 2.5 by 2.5. What we're actually looking for Ideally, um, now I, I don't know, because I don't have a, 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 a neuroscience background, I don't know if in the step before you can resize those images. Um, so in whatever, when you take the image out of the MRI scanner, the image that you, 
when you kind of you use your matrices and stuff. I don't know if you can resize it, but you're ideally looking for one by one by one instead of 2.5 by 2.5 by one. Um, so when we look at, if we look at our kind of, no, not that one, apologies. When we look at our sample data there, uh, let's have a look. Oh, go into there. When we look at, uh, we've got MRI wrong. So we open that there. You can see an image size there. We've got one by one by one, which has given us that nice image there. So in terms of, we've, we've got quite thick slices running back through the brain and, uh, and across the brain, which is why we're struggling to, to get these kind of three images there. We're seeing this one, but again, it's, it's not in the right resolution. Um, so I think the step before, it might need a little bit of tinkering. And unfortunately, because, like I said, my background is not in neuroscience, so I don't know how you would change that resolution there. It's certainly something I'll be able to ask and provide feedback on with some of my colleagues. So, yeah, I'll be able to, to portray that back to them. But, yeah, you, you can upload any uh, DICOM, Nifty, MINC, uh, and there's another one that you can upload as well that takes kind of the main, the main four formats. Um, Everything in terms of that is all available in the user manual there. It'll tell you all the formats and stuff that it that it'll let you um, that it'll let you upload. Any more questions? If there's anything you want me to that I've not covered that you want me to to try and run, I'll do to the best of my ability.